Hey, I'm Evan, head of engineering for RM Stator. Uh, today we're gonna show you how to install our charging system on a 2001 Honda CBR 600 F4i. So these are great sport bikes. There's tons of them. Um, they made the F4i for, I don't know, six or seven years or something. And it was the first, I think, fuel injected Honda CBR sport bike. Don't quote me on that, but I think so. And they're really awesome. They're not full on like RR race replica bikes, but they're really comfortable uh, entry level or even just comfortable sport bikes. So they stay really popular uh, because of that. They're really reasonable to ride on the road and long distances and people travel on them and all sorts of stuff. So um, anyway, so we have one here. Um, this is our, our camera guy, Ryan's bike. This is a 2001 model. And um, so this bike was actually a friend of ours originally, and it was a stunt bike. And this thing uh, ran great, mechanically was in good shape, but man, it was hammered. This bike was stunted really hard <laughs> and, and was pretty beat up. So we uh, brought it back to life a couple years ago and Ryan's put a lot of miles on it and it's been great. Um, we're gonna go ahead and upgrade the charging system on it. I don't think the CBRs ever had any massive problems that stick in my head that, that needed to be solved, but we do have a nice improvement for these. So let me show, so we're gonna install a new stator in it um, and we're going to install our CNC aluminum voltage regulator uh, that looks like this that's a really nice upgrade over the original both because it's a mosfet style regulator and what's different about this um, we use this on the vfr the honda vfrs as well we bypass the wiring harness on the vehicle that the original regulator connected to so it was running through feet of uh, old wire on the bike and added a lot of problem points for bad connections and unreliable uh, voltage regulation. So our regulator has wires that go directly to the battery terminals. So we bypass all the old wiring in the bike and we have a really direct connection between the stator coming in and then the battery going out. And it's a really nice upgrade over the original. So we're gonna put that in this bike and that's what we're doing today. Uh, to get started, we need access to the left side of the bike where the stator is. So we're not gonna show this, but here's what you need to remove to get started. You need to remove your gas tank so you have access to the connectors for the stator and regulator and the coils that we'll show you. Um, you need to remove your front and rear seats. You need to remove the left side panel here for the fairing. And then you need to remove your tail section because the regulator is mounted back here. So we're gonna get all those things off so we have the bike ready to go and then we'll get started on the installation. Okay, so we're over here at the left side of the bike. We have our fairing off. We have our tail section and seats off. The gas tank, I said remove, um, we're gonna leave it. We didn't wanna disconnect all the fuel lines and leak uh, all over. So we have it uh, propped up here. Like I think everybody with a sport bike in the world has ever done, prop up the tank with a hammer so we have access to stuff. So. I can't clearly show you the connections for the regulator on this bike are hidden behind this frame rail here. There's just no way we're going to get a good shot of it. So I went ahead and disconnected them. But if you trace the regulator, the regulator is mounted on the left side of the bike at the uh, back there. And if you trace its wiring back, you'll see it comes out to these two connectors. The white one is for the stator, the black is for the battery. And they are completely kind of hidden behind this frame rail back here. So you can move stuff around a little bit and get to the connector from down here and from up here. So it's not hard to do, but you kind of have to do it by feel. And I realized we're just, we're not gonna get you a good shot of actually disconnecting them. So I went ahead and, and disconnected. Here is the uh, battery side of the harness that is actually part of the vehicle harness. So you can see it's black plug right here. It was connected down behind here to the black plug on the regulator, right down inside here. And then on the back side, kind of lower, is the stator connector, which is the white one. And it ran right up here along with these other wires and was connected behind the frame. So I was able to wiggle that out a little bit and disconnect it down here and pull it out. So here we have the stator disconnected now. It's loose, so I'm gonna leave that hanging there. And we have the battery disconnected and we have our loose harness now for the regulator. So we can go ahead and remove the regulator from the bike and we'll see if we can do this in one shot. It's a little messy because it's such a long harness. You may have to do it off camera just because it'll take too long. But yeah, so you'll see it's routed down here through the plastic. We'll, we'll remove it off camera because it'll take a bit. And the regulator's mounted up here to the frame. 
Ryan can pan over and show that. Um, I have it just loosely held on here. It's mounted with two bolts. This bike was missing them, so we're using some probably non-stock Honda bolts, but they work. And it's mounted to these two spots here on the frame. So I'm gonna put those back, remove the regulator, and then you pretty much have to fish the wiring harness back out, which, like I said, will take a little bit of work to get it out through there, but that's how you remove it. So now that the regulator's out, um, I think we'll go ahead and install the new regulator and get its connections in the right place, and then we'll start on the stator. All right, so we had our old regulator removed. Um, so here's what we're doing. Our new CNC regulator with direct battery connections is really made for the VFR, but works just fine, same connector and all for the, um, the CBR600. Uh, the wire length is very different though on it. So you'll notice if we mounted it at the stock location in the back, which uh, we actually can't do anyways. This regulator is a much larger housing. So you can see here's our original versus the new one. So there's not even enough room to mount the large CNC aluminum regulator at the back uh, underneath the fairing. So here's my choice of location on the CBR. Now, don't judge me on this. This is temporarily held in place. We're gonna make a bracket uh, that'll finalize it in this area. Um, but right now I have it held in place with some zip ties to show you the location. So this is a great spot for it um, because there's a scoop on the fairing right here that absolutely dumps airflow through here and into the motor. So it's about an inch away from the cylinder head and then has really nice airflow through it. So this is a great spot to relocate the regulator on the CBR. No matter what, it's much better than putting it underneath the tail fairing where there's almost no airflow. So this is where we're doing it. We will build an aluminum bracket that picks up like these two mounting points and to locate it here. For now, we're holding it in place this way. The wiring's really simple. We have the stator connector just routed right here under the frame and it'll plug in to the stator and get tucked underneath. And the battery connections that are ring terminals for back of the battery, I've routed through here, basically the same path as the original. And then we go back up along the frame and come out right at the battery with our ring terminals. So I haven't connected them yet. We're still doing some other work on the bike, so we're gonna leave them loose, but they'll connect to the battery right there. So this is how I recommend doing the upgrade regulator. Um, this is a nice place to put it, uh, but yes, you probably do wanna make a nice bracket or something to hold it. Zip ties are fine for demonstration purposes. Um, we're not showing it in this video, but here's our original. If you were installing an OEM regulator, which we do sell the plug and play OEM type regulator exactly like this, and we do sell it in a MOSFET version, it'll fit underneath the back fairing, it plugs in. So if you want a totally plug and play installation, we have that version available. And I'm not gonna show the whole thing, but it's exact opposite of what you just did. Mount it back here with two bolts run your wires alongside the frame and plug in your connections again back here behind the frame. And that's it. So we're not gonna detail that. It's If you've gotten this far, it's very simple to install the OEM style regulator. But okay, so here's our idea for our upgrade regulator. We got it in place. Um, now we need to go ahead and start on the stator because we can't plug in our new regulator yet. So what we're gonna do here I have never done a stator on an F4i. I am not positive, but it has a really deep oil sump. So I'm gonna try and lean the bike over um, to the, the right side a little bit and see if I can pull the cover without losing too much oil. So I, at the moment, I can't guarantee you that works great or not, but we'll find out. If you don't wanna risk it or it's time for an oil change, this is a great time to just dump all the oil on the bike uh, so it's dry and you're not gonna drip oil everywhere. But this bike's had a recent oil change, so we're gonna give it a shot. I think we can pull the cover with it tilted just a bit and not lose very much oil at all. So that's gonna be my plan. So um, to remove the stator cover, um, you just have, what, about eight bolts, eight millimeters all the way around this cover. So it's very simple. It's already unplugged. You're just gonna unscrew all of those bolts and then you can walk the cover off. So let me get them unscrewed and then we'll show actually removing it. Okay, so I have all the bolts removed from the stator cover. I'm gonna take the last one out right here. And I've already pried the cover loose. Now, if you look around it, there's some pry spots on the cover, these are rectangular areas. There's one here here and here. And this is your best one up here because you can pry against the frame. So right there, this one, there's not a great spot to pry against, so I didn't use it. This one, I was able to gently pry against these 
vent tubes here, these vent hoses, and I easily pop the cover loose. So pry around it a little bit, get the cover loose. Then you want to grab it and kind of wiggle it out of the flywheel. Okay, so there's our stator in the cover. We'll put it on the bench in a second to, um, to uh, change it out. And then I want to point out this bike uses an intermediate gear from the starter to the flywheel. So like I said, I've never done a stator on this exact bike. Typically these have washers uh, that go usually um, sit on either side of gears like this. This bike doesn't have them. So um, I was a little surprised I expected them to be there, but I just wanted to point out because I'm not positive. Who knows this bike, like I said, it's a stunt bike and has probably been repaired a few times. The cover is pretty bashed up. So maybe it's possible that there is washers. I feel like I usually see them that might've been lost or something. They definitely didn't fall out here, but just in case that was the case on this bike and you remove this, make sure you check carefully uh, that they didn't fall off or anything in case they are there. Again, I'm not sure if they are or not. I just wanted to point that out because it, I usually see them. Um, when you put it back in, you can leave the gear sitting here. You kind of have to wedge it back in here behind the, um, the flywheel. And then it has to mesh with the starter gear and the flywheel. And when you put it back on, it has to slide onto this shaft here um, that came out in the stator cover. Oh, well, you know what? Good. I thought maybe that would be loose. Okay, so I'm going to take the shaft out. It just stuck in the stator cover. So that makes it even easier. You can just, uh, if it does come out in your stator cover, no problem. You can put the shaft back in the gear here. And I guess I'll do it off camera because it might take a minute to line up. But there we go. Okay. So this will be easier to reinstall for sure. Don't leave it in the stator cover. Take the shaft and get it back in the spot in the motor and get your gear lined up with the starter and the crankshaft. And then it'll be very easy to fit the cover back on. Um, okay, so that's removing it. We're gonna put the case on the bench and we will get the uh, stator swapped out. Okay, so here we have the stator on the bench and we're reusing the gasket here. So I was trying to be really careful and get it up enough without damaging it. Uh, I always recommend replacing the gasket. We don't have one available right now. We need to get this bike back together. So we're going to reuse this and it's in good shape and we're going to use some RTV sealer on it. So remove your mounting bolts for the stator. They're five millimeter Allen heads. I've already loosened them. And then you need to remove your wire clamp right here that holds the wires out of the way of the flywheel. That's a 10 millimeter. Then you can lift your stator up and get it loose. Then you want to pull, you know, like I said, if you're going to replace the gasket, remove it and clean the surface. In this case, I'm going to slide it underneath and remove the old stator. This one was in good shape. There's some signs it's been replaced though, because there's some sealer around the grommet that I've never seen on an OEM. So I suspect it's been replaced in the past. Okay. And then I'm going to lay the new stator in place. Okay. And it pretty much only falls into place in one area because of the cutout for the, the wire clamp on the stator. So you can't really install it wrong. Okay. Feed the wires through. Looks like I need to move the grommet back just a little bit. Okay. So I'm going to get the grommet in place. Make sure I've got good slack on my wires down here so I can make sure they're run totally out of the way of the flywheel. Looks good. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and install my mounting bolts for the stator. I use red Loctite on these, which is permanent Loctite. You can get it loose again, but it is just not worth installing a stator with anything else because these mounting bolts come loose, then the stator can hit the flywheel or the bolt will hit the flywheel and you'll damage way more expensive parts. So not worth it. Okay. Get those into place. I'll tighten those up. Okay. 
Oh, shoot. Well, that's not good. Looks like we tore the gasket a little bit. Okay, we'll get my wires into place. Gonna use a little bit of Loctite on the clamp. Make sure none of the wires are pinched. Okay, great. Okay, so that's really important to keep the wires totally out of the way of the flywheel. You don't want those to rub, get rubbed through on the flywheel at all. Do a final torque on the stator bolts. Great. Okay, so that's your stator swap in the cover. Um, I'm gonna clean this and then I'm gonna use some black RTV sealer around this gasket and then make sure the side case is completely clean and then we can get it back installed on the bike. Okay, so we're back at the bike. We have our stator installed, ready to go. Going to line it up and you'll feel the flywheel kind of pull it in. Move it around a little bit till it lines up on the shaft. Give it a few taps to make sure it seats all the way. Looks good, looks like our gasket seated fine. Now I'm going to put all the bolts into place. Luckily on this bike, all the mounting bolts are the exact same size and length, so there's no need to worry about what goes where. Okay. And then go ahead and tighten them up. Do a final check. Okay, looks good. All right, so I got the stator cover on. Then we're gonna plug in stator to regulator, which is very simple. Okay, plug that in. And then we will put the Connector back up here in the same location where it was. It wasn't zip tied or anything originally. I don't really think it needs to be. It's a safe place to put it. So we've got our wires routed up there for the stator. And that's it for the stator install. So last uh, we'll go and connect, make our battery connections and then we'll fire it up and see if our charging system is working. Okay, so we went ahead and connected our regulator um, ring terminals directly to the battery back here. I can't really show doing it too well because there's just not enough room to get the camera in. So now we have a direct connection to the battery. I'm going to put our voltmeter on here. Then we go ahead and fire it up and see that the voltage increases. So it looks like we hit 14.9 volts at idle, or I couldn't read it, maybe it was 14.6. Um, so it shows we're getting good charging right away. So it says our charging system's working well. And uh, yeah, so I think we have a successful stator and regulator replacement. And that's how you do it on a CBR600 F4i.